I'm reporting on the discussion we had this morning um, on the um, group that is led by um, Kelt Jensen, who unfortunately could not attend the workshop, and uh, Jutta Tenschert. And um, the title here is given on the left, Determination of Solubility and Dissolution Rate of Nanomaterials in Water and Relevant Synthetic Biological Media. And we already had a couple of nominations um, for participants and associated partners, and we got some spontaneous um, uh, nomination from Birmingham um, during our session, so that's great. Um, that gives us more um, uh, room for validation in the round robin. The next slide, please. So this group um, pushes forward three methods in parallel. On the left-hand um, side, you see the sequential GIT um, solubility, which is led by Jutta Tenschet from BFR, where you have a cascaded incubation of the nanomaterial in three um, different media. So the basic idea here is really the same as the one that was reported um, this morning um, from Italy. And um, the focus here is um, on the dissolution um, of the materials. And it follows a standardized composition of um, simulant fluids to cover saliva, stomach, and intestine. In the middle, you see the continuous flow system, which focuses on the pulmonary dissolution conditions and is adapted to um, detect and compare hours to years of half time. So relatively slower processes as relevant for this compartment. Um, this specific system um, focuses on two simulant fluids, um, the Gambles fluid, which is well established to simulate lung lining um, composition, and the Fargo lysosomal simulant fluid, which comes from NIOSH originally, and is also described in the ISO um, norm to model lysosomal dissolution. On the right-hand side, you see the atmosphere and temperature and pH controlled stirred batch reactor. So the abbreviation looks a bit complicated, but the important um, term here is um, stirred batch reactor. So this is a um, static test, uh, which simulates relatively short-term biodissolution and fortunately is performed in the identical fluids, Gambles and PSF. Um, and is also planned for some simple GIT testing and is currently led by NRCWE and already transferred to other institutes. Next slide, please. On this slide, we just shortly summarize um, the technical progress that was reported this morning towards finalizing the SOPs, towards intra-laboratory and inter-laboratory validation and harmonization. So on the left-hand side, the sequential GIT, a draft SOP is available and under revision at NSEWE. Also the draft guidance this morning um, was explained, which gives lots of very important um, notions and um, tips to enhance the robustness of the results including the sample preparation and the digestion of remaining organics, including peptides, uh, between the filtration and the analysis by ICP-MS, and um, very good progress in the matrix-matched um, ICP-MS calibration. Specifically, this was shown for cerium, zinc, aluminum, and titania. So that, again, covers um, a range of materials from quick to very slow dissolution. Also, preparations for the intralaboratory ring trials um, and the documentation have been advanced. In the middle, progress on the continuous flow system mostly comes from the PETROLS project. Um, it has adjustable parameters and of course you need a justification how you pick those parameters. That is work um, that was um, performed by um, BSF and RAVM in Gracious. So we can now predict the influence of the fluid volume flow on the results. We understand it, we have a mathematical model. 
and we know the valid range by comparison to benchmark materials in vivo. We also assessed um, the choice of the lysosomal simulant fluid because in literature, the diversity is enormous. Um, we selected five extreme cases which represent that diversity. Out of them, three came out as valid and that's work in patrols by ESTEC and um, BSF and not yet public needs to be submitted. More than 100 nanomaterials have been tested in this setup. So it's quite interesting to look at the rankings and comparisons there. And again, benchmark materials are identified so that this will add to the um, comparability between results obtained by different labs or different setups. On the right-hand side, NSCWE reported that um, they have finalized a comprehensive intra-lab validation on OECD materials, the ones shown here. That is finalized and the manuscript is in preparation. Additionally, they have provided a proof of concept on the patrols materials, which is very nice because now there are 12 identical materials, mostly from the JSC repository, not all. So 12 identical materials in two identical fluids measured both by the setup on the right-hand side, stirred batch reactor, and the setup on the left-hand side, continuous flow system. Um, and four of them also in the sequential GIT. So again, via the materials, we can add the coherence um, between those methods. Next slide, please. Our discussion was mostly about how to organize um, the round robins. And in black, you see the questions. In blue, you see the results. We asked what the essential measurements were and which ones should be reported. The group um, requested us to have a more comprehensive reporting, including the most robust uh, measurement, which is the original iron concentration at each sampling time point. We didn't initially foresee this, but it can be added. It makes sense. And additionally, then, one would report the evaluation of that data by a fitted halftime and by an evaluation as a rate, where the evaluation as a rate um, has very interesting um, material science um, implications because you scale by the available surface. But for that, you need to know that surface. And so um, it is more complicated. It has more assumptions. There was consensus that um, control materials should be used and should be made mandatory. Then it became obvious that it is possible to have a harmonized selection of such controls for the three protocols and specifically uncoated forms that are, have only one crystalline form of zinc oxide and titania were favored. Potentially that was not decided. It could be the NM110 and the NM101 um, which um, fulfill these criteria. Finally, we asked about appropriate criteria for acceptance. And there, um, the regulators in, in the discussion group really requested guidance on how to assess the acceptability of results from different laboratories that may use different methods. And of course, control materials are part of the answer, but do not en entirely um, answer that. So that again is homework for the project group to provide such guidance. Next slide, please. We also had quite an extensive discussion on how exactly um, the results should be documented. And we based this from a template that was available from the Gracious project, which is in that so-called NanoRec style. Um, and it was developed by the Italian Institute of Technology, University of Vienna and BSF. So it does cover the three different um, compartments, which are different setups also for oral, environmental and inhalation relevant to solution. And it already is um, revised and approved um, by um, 
idea. So um, Nina uh, for the eNanomapper import to databases. As I said, um, we decided to amend this template by the original um, ion concentration at each time, sampling time point. And we then further discussed at the bottom of the slide here, one also needs to, of course, report the composition of the medium temperature stirring. And we then had a discussion where we did not come to a conclusion, but we noted that we need to consider changes of size distribution, changes of agglomeration, how that influences surface and shape of particles over time, because at least for the evaluation of the rate, these are relevant inputs. Next slide, please. So this is the way forward. We are planning to have the SOPs finalized by January. And of course, they will need to be explained and discussed with all participants. Participants will also need to establish um, setups according to these SOPs. Then in February, test materials need to be distributed. We expect the start of testing by March and the completion by June because the time required to actually do those tests is not enormous. And also all the components are commercial. Um, but I think the, that's my personal comment. Um, the, the critical point here is to have the first establishment of, of methods in all participant labs. I think this is it.